So, doing a quick, quick recap of the last session. Um, after kind of making your way through the village of Alonzo, what was left of it, the trio of adventurers, which included Arn, Varus, and Palis, had with the help of the nice elvish individual they found along the way, managed to bring down a shambling mound. Um, we left off the previous session before that with uh, the trio felling the creature, and at the start of the last session, you guys were met with a um, long missing versing who had originally departed your group back in the werewolf incident and had since rejoined you in Alonzo. Um, he had traveled back to kind of deal with a calling that he had had and had joined the defense of the village prior to your arrival. Unfortunately, he was knocked unconscious during such time and although sparing his life, he was unable to help defend the village in his final moments. Although, let's be honest, it's probably the only reason he's still alive. Um, as you guys met, you learned that the Von Gallen estate had been completely ruined with nothing left standing, the whereabouts of Jeffrey unknown, and the last that you guys knew, Beast had been left in the forest where you guys departed from, unfortunately not accompanying you and leaving a good amount of gear behind. After kind of resting up a little bit in a house nearby, you went to depart, except you were ambushed by a number of pygmy creatures, again, of the um, almost a vegetation-like build to them. They looked kind of like walking vegetation in a sense. Um, in a very, very dire circumstance, you guys were pushed back into the front courtyard of this small house and managing to redouble your efforts, you eventually felled the creatures, learning that fire and uh, ice essential damage would cause the normally regenerating creatures to halt the regeneration and be killable. Um, you, after defeating them, decided that rather than staying in the area, you would push on towards the graveyard, where the majority of the group had already been headed. Uh, versing for his own personal reasons, the trio because they were searching for an individual named Javir, and as best as you could tell, the creatures all seemed to be heading in that way, so it was essentially the best option you had. Traveling through the village, you managed to get by without any more encounters, however, arriving in the graveyard itself, with Varys and Versing taking the most hilarious approach through the wide open graveyard, sneaking from tombstone to tombstone in the most stealthy way they possibly could, they uh, encountered a moving tree that basically bitch slapped Versing across the back and pushed him forward. Um, although you encountered another one of these bushes, they did prove to be more of a general area trap than an actual danger to you if you stayed out of their reach. And after traversing this land, we had Versing enter a small trans where he attempted to communicate with his patron, whatever it is, and learning that the tree that you had heard mention of before was somehow cutting off his patron's connection to the world and was essentially behind the raising and ruin of the village itself. You watched as Varys, the edgy rogue, stepped forward into the graveyard and found a small trap door, which appeared relatively new in design. Um, popping it open, you found a tunnel standing several meters below, and without second thought, jumped directly into the darkness below ground. Um, with the rest of the party quickly following you, and bringing up some magical lights, you began heading down this extremely wide, tall tunnel, eventually encountering some sort of creature that seemed to take the appearance of the many stalactites that you saw, and barely avoiding it as it dropped from the ceiling below, you fought off this small thing before a encounter between Palis and Varys erupted. Um, essentially, Palis attempting to smack some sense into Varys, and Varys, for the time being, seeming to take notice of the logic that he was hearing. Um, you agreed to let poor Gamely, your elven escort, lead the way with some personal hopes of obtaining the nice splint armor he was wearing. I feel like we're 
probably one of the major motivators. Um, and as you rounded a corner in the tunnel, you came across a large open cavern area. Um, from what you could see based on your light source, there appeared to be a frozen lake of some sort in its center, which provided you with the feeling of flowing water at some point, or some sort of water source. However, upon further investigation, you found that it was completely frozen over, um, only a few inches in depth itself. Stepping on it, you realize that it was completely solid. As your group began to make headway into the cavern itself, you suddenly saw a number of um, very tiny vegetation-like faces suddenly begin appearing all throughout the cavern itself, and with a bit of remorse you realize that you had walked into your second ambush of the day. Um, having left off, we are now going to have everyone roll initiative. And I start the game with a natural 20, so that's 25 with initiative! Damn, Wow. Just killing it. It's only initiative, though! <laughs> My best initiative since the first session I joined y'all in. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they've all been below five. That's okay, most of my attack rolls are below five. For our newest member, um, on roll 20, if you click on your character token first, which you will actually find more towards the center of the screen. Um, oh, actually, you won't see your character token. But normally, if you see your character token and then you click on the initiative button, it will actually auto roll it into our little tracker here. Just something to note for later on in the game. And water me icons. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Cause so how do I select the token? Cause I tried to do it a bunch of times apparently, but it won't let me. I'm sorry. No worries, you actually can't see your token yet because it's currently hidden beneath the dynamic lighting. That's right, you said that. Okay, yes. never mind. No worries. Once you can see it it'll make more sense and we can run through it then. It was more just a uh, heads up for later on. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I guess I'll just stay back for now. Uh, just for this session, seeing as Versing is not joining us, I'll run this character. As soon as I get this stuff in open. Alright, now for the fun organization part, which always takes forever because I've decided that I'm adding, like, everything. Uh, Varys, you will be beginning this initiative order with so much surprise. Okay. <laughs> so at this point, you can see on the edges of the shadows there are some faces popping up. You clearly can't see it on the game, but um, in the distance you can see about 10 heads that appear to be popping in and out from behind some stoneworks and stalagmites, and best as you can tell, they appear to be in a semicircle in front of you, anywhere from maybe... Uh, let's measure this quickly... Uh, maybe 60 to 100 feet out. Do we recognize these as the same sorts of... Uh, the creatures we were just fine. They appear to be bloody similar. Copy that. I guess I'll do a short bow attack. <laughs> Go 
ahead and roll to hit with disadvantage. An 18? That's all this advantage. This is, you know, drow territory. Um, wow. Out of pure luck, you managed to strike something that gives a small squeak. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, nine. Not even done with the initiative yet. Alright. Um, as your arrow strikes whatever gave out the squeak, it mid-squeak seems to go silent, and you have the feeling that you have knocked one of them at least unconscious, if not dead. Okay. Alright, I believe I have an issue done now. That took forever. Alright. Let's just do this as soon as I Oh, okay. Let's select the right thing. Um. Alright. I apologize if I somehow mispronounce this, but. Uh. Thalalia? How do you pronounce that? Thalali? Thalali. You know, I thought about it first, but definitely never would have guessed it. Your character token is currently up here. You, essentially, for whatever reason, have found yourself in this cavern. Um, lost and confused, you heard the sounds of some sort of creatures before you, and went to investigate. Uh, as you approached this cavern, you could also hear voices in the distance, many of which were humanoid in nature. Um, depending on what languages you can speak, you probably recognized most of them, as I'm assuming they were all speaking common. Yeah, you definitely recognized at least some of the languages, so it's definitely people of some sort. Um, however, you were surprised to hear the sudden sound of a bowstring in the distance, and a sudden um, squeak as if something had been injured and then simply dropped off the face of the earth as it appeared to have died. Uh, that's actually not a bad idea, Teapot. Do you guys want to do introductions? Yeah, I think it might make it easier for people listening to follow what's going on. So, I am Teapot of Doom, and I play Arn Nilo. She's a half-elven wild magic. You got out after wild magic. Sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> Or just a pure vessel of wild magic. <laughs> you know, with the way things are going, that pure vessel of, vessel of wild magic is definitely true. Uh, Blood, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Blood. I play Varys, who is a drow rogue. And our sneaky little assassin, who apparently always rolls either a natural 20s or above. Sometimes one's two. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Payless. Hello, I'm Gerhur. I'm playing Payless Aron Stacia. And uh, uh, I'm a uh, high elf paladin of Xanios, the god of justice. Who also picked the hardest last name to pronounce. <laughs> of course. And unfortunately, we have missing this week uh, Pig Destroyer, who normally plays Versing Von Gallen, the noble warlock who has a mysterious patron watching over him. Um, newest to our team is Fiverr. Fiverr, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Fiber. I'm playing uh, a fighter called Fulele Frith. Uh, she's standard human, acolyte, likes to string swords. It's a bad. Alright, and I mean, I'm of course the DM. Um, yeah, not much to say about me. Um, so, at this point, Fiverr, 
we have you standing in this cavern. Um, you can hear some sort of fighting going on in the distance, or at least the start of a fight. Um, but being human, there's not much that you can see, seeing as it's pitch black. What would you like to try and do to start off with? Um, I mean, at this point, your options are kind of limited. You can run away from the fight, you can try and find your way somewhere. Could I light one of my torches and go towards the voices? Absolutely. And as you take a moment to light this torch, which, with the experience you've gained wandering through this land, it's becoming second nature, even though everything seems to be wet and soaked with the rainforest-like atmosphere. You watch as the light, excuse me, suddenly expands outwards and you can see a number of reflective creatures which um, in appearance they're about two and a half feet tall on average. They have a very vegetation-like look. Um, many of them appear to have mushrooms and almost vine-like entities wrapped around them. Um, they're very, very frail looking in many senses, but you can see that they do hold a number of different weapons. Um, they all appear to be focused on something in the complete opposite direction of you, and none of them seem to have noticed you yet, even with the fire suddenly appearing in your hands. Are they looking towards the voices? Best as you can tell, they seem to be. Can I attack one that's not looking at me? Ah, uh, let's just see the measurements here. You would have to get within a five foot radius to attack one of them with most of your weapons. Um, Longsword being melee, the two hand axes you have can be thrown. But I think they have a maximum distance of 40 feet, which is within range, but it all depends on whether you want to attempt to throw one and possibly lose one, or if you'd rather just walk up and hack and slash. I think I'd rather just walk up and hack and slash. Alright, so if you grab hold of your token, you should be able to move it. And all you're going to do is move it right about where that measuring tape's pointing. Alright, and as you approach, you notice as, with the sound of your clacking armor, the creature in front of you suddenly turns around, cocking its head slightly and staring at you with some... confusion. Am I close enough to hit it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you would be close enough to hit it. Um, that's a five foot radius that you need to get into. Um, sorry, quick answer to Teapot. Yeah, you guys are in the bottom right area. Most of this will be blacked out with the new dynamic lighting. You only see what your vision allows you to see from now on. Um, Fair enough. Philele, right? Yeah. Perfect. It will take me a couple of times to get used to that. Um, at this point, you could go ahead and make a longsword attack. You're definitely within range. It has, however, noticed you, which only means that you don't get any sort of attack of surprise or anything like that. So it's just a normal attack. So all you're going to do is on your character sheet, do you see in the center where it says longsword? Yeah, do I just click on that? Yep. Um, assuming you have your shield in hand, you'd be doing a one-handed strike. You can also choose to do a two-handed strike, which is where you simply grasp the sword with two hands and it does a little bit more damage because it essentially factors in the fact that you're not just slashing with one hand, but you're putting actual power behind it. That's the only difference between those two. Okay, and do I roll normal advantage or disadvantage? Probably for, not. Yep, for this you would roll normal. Um, advantage and disadvantage are two things that we'll get into later. Um, you may have seen Varus roll it earlier, and all it is is in certain situations you may have um, a bonus to your attack or something that draws back your attack, so you'd roll advantage or disadvantage. 
and depending on which one you roll, you would either take the higher of the rolls or the lower. Gotcha, I rolled a 14. Alright, so I just need to see... So, your sword strike actually manages to hit as you lash out at this creature. Uh, somewhat surprised to see you, it's unable to dodge out of the way or defend itself in anything sort of case. So, do you see where it says that 14 and underneath there's that little long sword one-handed? If you click on that, it'll actually automatically roll the damage for you. Six. Alright, as you strike out, you cut a huge sort of slash across this creature's chest, and you can hear the same squeak erupt from it as if it was severely injured and mimicking the creature that you heard earlier. Do we hear this wolf? Uh, you guys do. You can hear the sudden clinking of armor and... Um, I'm just going to quickly pinpoint you guys, just in case you can't see that. There you go, blood should be shown. Can you guys see that at least? That's basically what the map looks like for me. Yeah, mine's just all blacked out, but that's okay. It's all fine. That's how mine was in the beginning. Is dancing light still on, or is that now gone? Thank you. <laughs> Can you see now? Yes. Okay, I'm still learning all these settings. I didn't realize I have to select that you guys have sight. Which is kind of dumb. I mean, that should be the default, right? <laughs> I must have somehow disabled it and not realized. <laughs> Suffice to say, you guys can see now, I hope. We all have Fey ancestry though, so we should see 50, uh, 60 feet. I see 120. <laughs> yes, um, in this situation, not so much, but we'll come to that later. Magic. Sir, yes sir. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, at this point, Flurly, um, most of your attack will be over. You've moved your 30 feet, you've done your action. Um, in some cases, you could get what's called a bonus action, which would allow you to do certain other abilities if you have it. I don't believe that your fighter has any at the current time. I don't think so either, so I can just end my turn now. Yep, so, so long as there's nothing else you want to do, any sort of uh, free action could be anything like yelling at a creature, saying something, um... I tend to let uh, sheathing and drawing weapons be a free action. I'm gonna keep mine out. Alright. Now the fun begins. Um, as you guys are listening, those of you in the party itself, you can hear the sounds of uh, sudden combat erupting somewhere in the vicinity ahead of you. You can also see this bright torch um, illuminating one of the small creatures and a humanoid individual that seems to be fighting them. Um, you don't have any idea who this is, and the sudden appearance of this is very odd because although you can see where the light is itself, everything in between and around seems to be still engulfed in darkness, even where you figure the light should shine onto. Actually, now that I'm thinking about that, I need to put that there. Um, meanwhile, as you guys are processing all this, you can hear the sudden clicking of movement on ice as a number of creatures slide into view around you. Uh, you once again notice a number of these pygmy-like creatures, which I'm sure some of you have some very, very great feelings towards. I love them. They are my bestest friends. This music is what plays in my head constantly. <laughs> you know, I just realized the music is still playing, and that's the wrong song. Let's get what is supposed to be playing in here. 
Ah, that's what. <laughs> I have no music. No, I cancelled it. I'm trying to look. There's the right song. Just to make you guys feel so much better. Alright. Palis, you watch as the two creatures to your left, winding up their sling, suddenly release the little stones which come flying towards you. That is a... Uh, doo -doo -doo. That's a 23 and a 17 to hit. 23 hits. You take four points of damage as one of the stones seems to strike against your cheek, just missing the edge of the helmet itself. Uh, Arn, as you're watching, oh, you see a stone out of the corner of your eye come flying towards you. That's a 10 to hit. It's a miss. And... This last one's gonna be a shot at Versing with a 15. I don't think that is. Like, nope, just misses. Uh, Versing manages to duck another one as it goes flying by. Quick question. When you were running on, did you happen to cast Mage Armor? I actually didn't. Uh, Flaley, as the creature before you suddenly kind of seems to almost heal in place, its wounds closing over itself, you watch as, for starters, I add that hope back, and secondly, it um, reaches out towards you with these very claw-like vegetation things. It's going to attempt to do a claw attack against you, which is definitely not going to hit. Um... Unfortunately, only rolling eight, you managed to get your shield up at the last second and block the strike. At the same time, because I am oh so nice, you hear the clatter as two stones seem to bounce off the shield, and a third one getting a 22 to hit manages to slide over top of your defense and strike you in the face. You take four, yes, four points of bludgeoning damage as this small stone impacts your cheekbone. So many dice hitting the table scared me. <laughs> I always roll uh, real dice because I don't like digital dice. They never roll well for me. Um, so on your hit points, do you see on your sheet where it says current hit points? Yes, I turned it down to six. Perfect. For whatever reason, it didn't update for me, but that's fine. Oh, there we go. I must, I have to click off of it. Alright, moving through all of those. Uh, what is the name of the First thing. What is Versing going to do? Versing? Ah, yes. Those of you around Versing watch as, with a smug look, he steps forward and raises his one hand in his traditional single, single finger salute, attempting to release the beam of energy that he normally calls forth. There is a single moment where he seems to stand there, almost smirking, before you realize there's nothing happening. And, with a look of defeat, he seems to curiously look towards his hand, unsure of exactly what happened. Palis, what would you like to do? Um... Everyone's still grouped up on me. That's good. Um, are we our backs against the wall, or can we move up on this formation? Um, it's actually a single solid surface. So you've got that little thing that looks like an edge is just like a 
few inch dip into the ice area itself. And then you have the formation. Do you see where Gamli's sitting and there's that rock looking thing to his right? That is yeah. a stalagmite that sits about um, probably about 15 feet tall. Okay, okay. It's um, only about uh, five feet wide, though. Okay. I'm going to uh, tell the others, we need to get behind this rock and I'll um, get behind the rock and get behind me. Uh, allow them to hit me and then you attack from uh, cover. And then I will take the dodge action. Perfect. Arn, what would you like to do? I am I'm going also to take a step back. So... Yep. I'm going to take his advice and head over this. Um, and I'm going to cast create bonfire um, at the full extent of its range, which is 60 feet in the direction that the rocks came, just so that we can get some maybe some visibility. Okay, um, there were two different sides that the rocks came from. There was the ones to your left, where previous left, and there is a area to your, what is now essentially your straight ahead and slightly right. Um, which area would you like? Uh, <laughs> man, let's go straight ahead. Okay. Um, dead center? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, and it's dexterity save, right? Did that not come up? That's annoying. Uh... Just a sec. There we go. Yep, dexterity saving. Alright. You watch as this small little flame erupts between these two tiny creatures, and with squeaks, they each attempt to jump out of the way, getting a total of five. Ha 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 And what do we see? Uh, is that it? <laughs> all you can see based off the firelight is these two tiny pygmy creatures, which are very similar to the ones that you've previously encountered. One appears to be holding a spear-like device, and the other appears to be armed with a slingshot. Or a sling, rather. Okay. Does that bonfire stay lit? It does. Uh, so long as you're concentrating on it. Okay, so can we see, like, what sort of radius of light is it throwing? Amazingly, it's only giving off about a five-foot radius of light. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll that 1d8 for damage, though. Ah! And Arn begins the game with a killer roll. Don't get used to it. You hear a squeak from the two creatures as the flames seem to erupt across their bodies. They clearly do not like this, and you can see that one of them is left standing relatively severely injured. Um, obviously not enjoying the fire that you just created in their center. Anything else, Arn? That's it. Alright. Gamely is going to move around the stone. And he's going to also take the dodge action for this one. Varys, you notice as three of the creatures seem to be approaching from your left side, two of them, one with the spear, one with the sling, are approaching from your top right. Um, in the small amount of firelight, you can also see a number of these creatures seeming to encircle the humanoid in the distance. And this is somewhat bullet. If I shoot at the humanoid, the creature surrounding the human 
in the far distance, can I hit them, or that'd be disadvantage? Um, you figure you've got enough of a bead on where they are that it's not going to be too difficult to shoot them, so long as there is nothing in the way. But based off the current visibility, as far as you can tell, it's a straight shot to the creatures. I'll do that. <laughs> okay, which one do you want to try and hit? Uh, which ones are there surrounding? Grouping up. There is one that she is currently in melee combat with. Um, one to her bottom left, one to her bottom right, and there is another one just above and to the right of her. I'll go for the above right one. Alright, so what is the distance on that side? What's the range on your bow? Uh, I don't remember it says that. Wait, wait, wait. It's the short bow, right? Yeah. As I quickly look that up. It is... you're looking at... 80 and 320. Go ahead and roll with disadvantage. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, um... Miss, uh, estimating the range on it, you watch as the arrow falls short, clattering on the ground in front of the creature, who seems to stare down at it in confusion for a moment before you notice him peering into the darkness, um, almost like he's trying to spot where the arrow came from. Is dancing light so on? It is for the moment. Can I move them as a bonus? <laughs> you could. Can I, like, try and spread them around this icy floor cavern? How far do you want to spread them? Um, the range is 120 feet. I think they have to stay within a certain distance of each other, no? Um, I'm trying to... Let's be within one. a 20 feet of another light. Yeah, that gives you a pretty good spread, though. Yeah, and they also do dim light of 10 feet of light. Usually. Usually. I'm not sure about this little crazy... <laughs> I'll try to spread them evenly as much as I can. Okay, whereabouts do you want them pinpointed? I'll try to put one near where I heard, where I saw the torch light. If that's in range, I'm not sure in that direction. Um, based off your most recent recent shot, you feel like you could get it about three quarters of the way towards the torch light, and it's going to sure. light up in between. <laughs> but you're not going to quite make it to the torchlight itself. Sure, I'll do in that direction. I'll do that. Okay. And I'll just spread them I guess horizontally? I'm not sure what the room is like, so... Uh, the charger, I think, is downstairs. Yeah. Um, sorry, just a sec, guys. I'm screwing around with the dramatic lighting. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I'm actually answering a question about another computer. That's fine. I'm also trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this. So, as you release the magic orbs and send them flying into the distance, you watch as, for the moment, the light disappears from your current perspective and as they go further and further away suddenly you're unable to see shit can i re can i retrieve them <laughs> reverse uh the entirety of you three palis Varus, and um, Arn, you suddenly watch as the vision before you goes dark, as if you're standing in 
essentially a dark cavern. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that! You can see in the distance these magical lights which spread across an open area, but everything around you is no longer visible. So what do we see? Essentially black. Um, we can't see where the lights are. You where can the see lights where travel. the lights are, and you can see this uh, eighty-foot line of lighted area, um, but not much beyond that, other than the human with the torch in the distance. Right. This is bad, guys. Don't worry. If I wait for my next turn, I'll really just cast it. <laughs> Well, it's not helping us hugely. Like, we're probably <laughs> fine one way or the other. We're kind of pinned if we can't see. Payless, should we um, make a run for this? That what? Uh, nope. Hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, so many settings on this. How about now? I see nothing. I can see your rings. Alright, do you guys see the rings in the center here? I can see the pink. I see nothing. <laughs> Alright, well, in this central area here is where the rings are that should be lighting everything. Oh, right, you don't have sight. I keep forgetting <laughs> I that away. Oh, there we go. Man, these settings, I'm telling you. They're killer. How's that now? You guys should be able to see the rings, but not where you're standing. Yep, got that. I can kind of see my avatar, but I'm not sure if that just... <laughs> uh, I think you're on the edge of one of the light sources. Yeah. I can see me. very tempted to make a dash action towards the lights. <laughs> it's a trap! And I have a feeling Payless is just gonna kill me at the end. <laughs> we need to make a plan, guys. <laughs> Ferris, what else would you like to do? Oh, I'm very tempted to say dash towards the lights. <laughs> uh, at this point, I think you only have your movement left. Do I not have cunning action, or did I use that as a bonus for the? Did I use bonus the to move the light? Bonus action. Okay. Casually saunter towards the rings. I could probably make it to one of the rings with my full movement. <laughs> you probably could. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and. The rest of you watch as Varys suddenly emerges into the light, um, once again kind of illuminated by the glowing discs. Flaley, you can see in the distance these sudden glowing orbs which seem to be hovering in midair. Um, once in the distance, they seem to have moved into a line between you and whatever stands on the other end of this. Uh, a few seconds later, you can see as this charcoal-skinned individual steps forward into the light, um, moving extremely silently and with a sort of saunter that displays someone who's used to sneaking around. Um, you also manage to see a arrow go flying past and nearly missing your head clatter against the ground behind you. 
There is still a single of these creatures in front of you and the two on the side, as well as you noticed from your peripheral, there's another creature behind you. Um, essentially, you are surrounded at this point, and you can tell that you might have friends somewhere in this cavern, but not entirely sure where all of them are. I'm gonna hit the one in front of me again. Alright, go ahead and roll to hit. Damn. You once again <laughs> slice across the creature's chest, managing to leave a very gouging wound, which normal circumstances you feel would be life-threatening, but with the fact that these creatures seem to heal over time, you're kind of questioning whether this thing is going to drop dead anytime soon. Um, at this point, you still have your movement if you want to take it. However, one word of warning, if you move out of uh, melee range with something, they get what's called an attack of opportunity, which is essentially a creature can use its reaction, which it gets one a turn of, to attack anything that leaves its melee range. Um, you would also get this ability if a creature were to leave your melee range. So if you move out of the five feet radius, you get that attack of opportunity. These are plant creatures, right? You said? They're built of vegetation-like material. Um, not quite flowers, more fungus and that sort of material. Mushroom. Not, not something that like could set on fire is what I mean. You're not sure. They definitely seem to be wary of the fire that you had dropped at your feet as you drew your sword. But whether they'll go up in flames if you shove it into the creature, you're not sure. Could I do that, or would that be would that have been like my action instead? That would be an action, simply because you're trying to essentially attack something with fire. Okay, uh, I think I might just stay where I'm at. Take chances. All right. In that case. We get to do all the creatures again. Yay! Hey. And the best part is, you guys don't know where half of them are. Realized that those two are supposed to be seen, so I had to fix that. Alright, um. This little dude is going to go over this way, and as he steps out of the light, you guys watch as he disappears. Um. What? Uh, the second one up here is going to take another slingshot at Versing. Wow, Versing. Unfortunately, he misses, and Payless, you're surprised to hear a rock suddenly clatter off your right shoulder. Not harming you in any way, but definitely kind of scaring you a little bit. same time, one of the creatures on the other side is going to attempt to shoot at Palus with a whole 14 to hit. That's a miss. Sorry. No worries. Uh, second one's going to miss too. Um, as you kind of bring your shield up in a more reactive way after hearing the one clatter off your shoulder, you hear the sounds of two stones bouncing off the shield itself, um, neither one harming you. Wow, oh, this is not a lucky turn. Alright. Okay. 
Flaily, you get the luckiness of having the attention of all the creatures surrounding you. Yay! Three of them are going to attempt to uh, fire their slings at you. Oh my god, it's so nice playing with you. <laughs> uh, that's a 10. That's a 14. What's your armor class again? 18 if I 18. remember? Yep. Okay, so the first two miss. The last one, which is a unnatural 20, uh, 16 plus 4, will hit you. You take four points of bludgeoning damage as another rock embeds itself in your cheek. At this point, they're kind of frustrating and really annoying, but uh, I would say not too worrisome, but with the way you're standing, a little bit worrisome. Last one is going to attempt to claw you, but with a 16, I don't think that hits you. God, I hope not. <laughs> It has to be your armor class or higher in order to hit you. So I'd have to roll, I believe you said 18 or higher to hit you. Yeah, so it does not hit me. Perfect. All right. Versing is going to blindly wander around in the dark trying to find his way. Oh boy. Oh, Versing. Oh, Versing. You guys can hear as Versing seems to stumble around in the dark, and after a very loud thud, you hear a rather vulgar elvish word thrown out into the echoing cavern. Um, he does appear to still be alive, but you definitely feel like he either ran into something or fell over. Payless, at this point you can see the floating orbs of light with Varus standing on the edge of the line. Um, you can also see a number of the pygmy creatures which are surrounding this new humanoid in the distance, but everything in your general vicinity, including your companions, appear to have disappeared. In character. Payless. We need to go and help her, but we, we're we going to have to... Who's talking to me? Where are you? <laughs> no, I literally only see my icon in one of the veggie pygmies up to my upper right. Yes, but you still work, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, um, right here, directly in front of you, you should see, should, in quotation, see Varus and the rings. Okay, I see the rings. And then, it's probably just my internet. It could be any number of things. We're still learning the system a little bit. Um, where those rings are, if you keep going straight up a little ways, there's Philele up there, and a number of pygmy creatures surrounding her. Um, okay. We need to do a thing, guys. Yes, we do. Um... Shoot, 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 shoot. I hate these damn pygmy things. Um. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to... Can you help... I'll, I'll call out for my allies. Can you help <coughs> this stranger ahead? And I'll try to cut this one down and catch up with you. Okay. I can, I can actually reach her from here with one spell. I also may incinerate her. <laughs> I can't even get to the creature. Okay, I'll move up on the, uh, behind Varus and to their right, and then throw a javelin at the pygmy to the right. What's the range on the javelin again? Is it 20? Thirty-one twenty. 
you are just in range. Go ahead and roll to hit. Eighteen. You watch as the javelin embeds itself into the creature. Go ahead and roll damage. Six damage. And with a squeak, the creature suddenly collapses to the floor, its body almost not quite melting, but breaking apart. Hmm. That's in game, I go. Huh. It didn't regenerate. And that's that's it. Alright, Arn, you are surrounded by darkness. You remember there being some sort of tall rock-like thing in front of you, and some friends around you, but otherwise you can't see shit beyond the floating lights in the distance. I can't see the human? You can see the human, you can see Varus and Palis and the floating lights, but you're unable to see Gamely, who is your elven friend that you picked up, and you can't see uh, Versing. <sighs> bugger. And I've got bugger all hit points too. Um, can I position... I want to use a firebolt and help out this random human in a cave. Can I position myself, because I can't see anything on the map, in such a way that should my firebolt miss a twig or a, whatever it is, um, it's not going to hit her? Which one are you going to try and hit? There are four around her. There's one that's directly in melee. One to her bottom left, one to her bottom right, and then one above her to the right. Well, it's hard for me to say because I, I out of character, can't see anything. So I just want to kind of angle myself so that the firebolt, which is a straight line. Right. Just pinging all the <clears throat> things for you. Yep. Can you ping her? Uh, she is the one dead center right there. Um, okay, so there was one that was kind of over this side. Uh, there's two over there, one behind her a little distance, and one in front of her a little distance. I don't know, I just don't want to kill anyone. Is it doable? Go ahead and roll an intelligence check. Oh gee god. <laughs> Based I'm on so what smart. you can see, and judging the distance from the arrow earlier fired, you have a feeling that you're probably out of range of the one at the back. However, the one in front, either to her left or right, you feel you could hit either one of those without too much concern about hitting the humanoid itself. Um, of course, your logic okay. here is based off of experience, and you're still a little concerned that there is the possibility of something going seriously wrong, but who knows? I mean, this is me we're talking about, so there's always some, there's a chance that something might go seriously wrong. Okay. I am going to step up a little bit. Just kind of, All right, you go know, ahead and roll hit. a d20. Ugh. <laughs> What's my threshold? I've forgotten. <laughs> it's not that. Um, okay, as you're walking forward, your foot catches something on the ground, and you feel yourself trip for a moment. You do manage to catch your balance, and you're not in any way thrown off or thrown prone. However, you are reminded that in the dark, it's extremely hard to tell where you're going, and this is not a surface where you want to make a mistake. <sighs> Guys, <laughs> I want to cast a fireball. Everyone needs to die. I'm doing it. Alright, which one are you going for? The one on the right. Alright, go ahead and roll the hit. Am I about to die? I hope not! It's a 
22. It's not awful. Damn. Go ahead and roll damage. <clears throat> All right. Closing your eyes momentarily, seeing as sight is not helping you as much as you want anyways. You call forth the fireball, and squinting as much as you can while still not obscuring all of your vision, you arch back your hand and throw forth the ball of flame. You watch as it arcs over your two friends and collides into the chest of the pygmy-like creature. <laughs> As the fire spreads over its body, you can hear the slight screech squeal as it seems to erupt completely, and in a ball of flames disappears onto the floor in ashes. You're welcome! Thanks for singeing my eyebrows off. <laughs> hey, you- that is nothing on, on the yarn spectrum. Anything else? <laughs> That's all I got. Alright. Let's see. Gangly is going to go. I'm gonna try a little bit. Huh. Interesting. Alright. Uh, Varys, what would you like to do? Can I move 30 feet and then shuffle, as a bonus action, shuffle my lights? <laughs> You absolutely can. Where would you like to shuffle them? Well, it says as a bonus action, I can move them 60 feet. Hey, wait. Oh, no. As a bonus action on your turn, you can move the lights up to 60 feet to a new spot within range. So, a little bit ahead of me, I guess? How far ahead? Maybe 20 or 30 feet? <laughs> Maybe 40? I don't know. I can move them. <laughs> You could move them essentially over top of Flaley. Um I think the absolute sure. max. <laughs> the front one, if it goes 60 feet, is going to... It's going to go about 30 feet past Flaley's icon. So I guess I'll shuffle them 30 feet ahead with the front one, and this had them all shuffle in line. Yeah, I like that. Alright. Palis, you're once again left in the dark as the <laughs> lights move forward from your body. Um, your once beautiful vision of everything around you disappears as darkness overwhelms you, and all you, th you can see is these four hovering lights now well illuminating the individual who has joined you in the cavern. Anything else, Varus? Try and tackle the pick me guy on my view here on the left. Alright, are you using the short bow? I guess so. I'm too far away to do my rapier. <laughs> a little bit. Go ahead and roll the hit. I guess this normal? Time, yep, just a normal roll. 18? 18 will hit. Uh, 9 piercing. As you embed into the creature with your arrow, you watch as its form falls to the ground, slumping over, apparently dead. And that's it. <laughs> <coughs> Flaley, you watch as these newcomers seem to be an extremely deadly force. Um, one essentially burning one of the creatures to a crisp, the other with a well shot long, uh, short bow uh, taking the other creature to the ground around you there is still the small pygmy behind you as well as the one that you're locked in melee combat with and there are a number of magical orbs which appear to be giving off a very small amount of light hovering between you and the elven individual that you can see approaching you can I pick up my torch and wave it at the guy in front of me in melee Go or stab ahead. him with it, I mean. Yeah, go ahead and roll a d20. Um, all you're gonna do for that is type exactly like that into the chat window. Perfect. 
I got a 15. Alright, so now what I'm gonna have you do is go ahead and roll 2d6 for me. I got a four. No, I'm sorry. I got a six. Yep. So, as you shove the flaming torch into the creature before you, you watch as small parts of its body seem to wither and die at the touch of the flames. Um, not what you were hoping for. It doesn't quite go up in flames, but based off the burn patterns on its body, it is extremely injured and not having a good day. Uh, you still have your movement if you want it, but again... If I move away from it, though, it's got a hit, and I only have two hit points, so... Want to stay where you are? Yeah, I think so. Perfect, alright. Yep. So, from behind you, you guys can hear the sudden coughing sounds of Gamely. Um not sounding like he's having a good time. Uh, yep. Um, for those of you that remember, it sounds very similar to the coughing that some of your members experience when spores seem to get stuck in your throat. Oh. <laughs> Can't lose an NPC, folks. <laughs> At the same time, Palis, you hear the sounds of tiny rocks skittering between the distance to your left and you, seeming to whistle as they pass through the air. Uh, most of them miss, however, one with a 19 I believe hits you. That's a hit, yeah. Alright. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> no, it's not. I didn't take into account that. Um, you can hear the sounds of three stones zipping past as they all just barely miss you, uh, skittering off into the darkness somewhere to your right. You have a feeling that you were saved by some sort of obstruction in the vicinity, but you're not quite sure what it was. At the same time, Varus and Flele, you get the nice observation of one of the creatures that you had just downed suddenly standing back up before you, um, the arrow in its body pushing itself out and the face healing over partially as the creature appears to regenerate. Uh, two of them are going to take attacks against... Let's double check some distance here. Yep. Two of them are going to take uh, sling attacks against Varus. That's a 16 and 23 to hit. Both hit. You take 8 points of bludgeoning damage as the rocks embed into your body, and although they're tiny, they sting like a bitch. Lately, the one in front of you is going to attempt to stab you with its claws, but rolling a 14 is unable to make it past your armored defense. Um, you can hear the sounds of the vine-like claws kind of scattering across your shield. Thank god. <laughs> Versing's going to try and make his way forward again. And this time he doesn't impale himself. Palis, you can feel a slight gust of wind and a shoulder check as you feel somebody push his way past you on your right side. And, yep, Palis, can what I, are you going to do? I can't use my dark vision at all in here? Your normal vision in darkness, you feel, is somehow being almost impeded in some sense. Um, 
It doesn't quite make sense to you. Okay. And you said someone just pushed past my right? Yes. Did they feel human-sized height? Uh, yeah, it was definitely someone of your height or a little bit bigger. Um... Okay. I'll say, who is that? Oh, oh, it's just me, Palace. I'm just, uh... This bloody darkness. Okay. Um... Well, just try to find fault uh, here. I've got this, <clears throat> and I will bring my sword up uh, and whisper uh, my prayer to Xanios to imbue it with her divine power, and I will channel divinity sacred weapon. What's the light range on that normally? Uh, twenty feet. Twenty feet. Okay, you watch as the sudden bright light erupts, giving you a 10-foot radius of sight. Um, less than you're normally used to, but still enough that you can see Versing standing in front of you, uh, who kind of blinks in surprise as the sudden bright light erupts. Alright, um, didn't plan on that, but I will move forward towards Varus? Can I even see Varus? I probably can. Uh, you actually can. Varus is standing in the center of the lit area. Oh yeah, I saw the roll for dancing light because it's concentration. <laughs> did you take damage? Yes, you did. Uh, yes. yes. Go ahead and roll twice for that. Two constitution saves. Does 2d10? Uh, two d d20s? Uh, a two and a seven. Now they combined it, so. It's a constitution save. So you add your con modifier to either of them get the ten? No, it's disadvantage? Advantage? I'm sorry. Well, it's still gonna be the same because I have uh, nothing to constitution. <laughs> So zeros. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All of you watch as the once light emitting discs disappear midair, and I throw my dice tray all over my table. Suddenly, aside from the torchlight that Philele is providing and the sudden bright light of Palus's sword, the entire cavern is once again engulfed in darkness. Okay. And I moved up uh, 30 feet, and I'm done. Alright. Arn, what would you like to do as you see the plethora of lights disappear? Um, you can still see Palis, you can essentially see a bit of Varus and Versing, as well as the human in the distance who you've been trying to help. Um, three pygmies currently surround her, and everything else is in darkness. I'm going to um, run up behind Palis, wherever he is. Can you, Palis, can you ping? How do I? I got down that. Uh, go ahead and roll another d20. Me? No, that would be for on. <laughs> Me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Seventeen. With surprising ability and a confidence that you haven't felt in quite a while, you jump forward. Uh, your soft footfalls, managing to avoid anything that would impede your movement. So I've just dumped my icon somewhere there, hoping I'm behind Palus. <laughs> Perhaps I'm, I, you know, I may have climbed his back, piggybacking. You haven't quite made it up to Palus yet. Well, look, I'm just following the light, so... Ah! There we go. Ha -ha. 
uh, so this is in character, guys, we're going to have to stay together and we're going to have to keep Varys alive so that he can provide us with light. And I think we're just going to have to move in formation with Palis at the front. Agreed? Yes, please let me go first. That's fine, but we just need to, you know, we need a plan. We can't just keep running around in the dark. Okay, so having said all of that, I'm gonna <laughs> we're gonna have the same conversation again, Wolf. Can I can I pick off one of the creatures attacking Philele? Yes, there is currently the one to the bottom left, the one that she's directly in melee with, and then there's the one to her right and slightly behind her. Um, all three at this point, you figure, are probably within range. Um. Okay, which which is the one that's that I'm least likely to collect her with collaterally? Go ahead and make a wisdom check. Nineteen. You figure, and this is off your best estimations, that the one in front of her and to the left is probably going to be the safest as the one behind her with your current angle you would have to essentially throw the firebolt right over her shoulder and based on your history of magic it's slightly concerning on how um, absolute that shot needs to be how close am i to her or the pygmy to the pygmy uh Best estimation, somewhere between 40 and 50 feet. Okay. Just checking I can't bonfire. No, I can! 60 feet! That is still up and running in the area where you left it, by the way. I assumed that that would... Oh, that's a can she move it? <laughs> well, I can recast it, it's just a cantrip, but I assumed that that would have disappeared when I cast my firebolt. No, it's concentration. It's unless you have your concentration knocked out or you cast another concentration spell, it stays. Okay. Um, can I move it? I think you have to recast it to move it. Okay. Well, um, I just feel like that's a safer bet so that I'm not going to knock out Philele. So I'm going to create another bonfire, um, this one that's right in front. Okay, and right on the center of the creature. Why not? Alright, it's going to make its dexterity saving throw, and it rolls a 8. That is a failure, my friend. Go ahead and roll your 1d8. Alright, as you call forth the bonfire, you watch as with a little bit of glee, you force the flames to crawl up the body of this creature, and with a squeal of pain, it melts into ashes, completely disintegrated under the nice heat of the fire. It's not a small amount of glee. <laughs> so much glee. Anything else, Aaron? Me. Uh, Stick together. You can hear a choking cough and the sound of some sort of combat going on in the distance. Um, best guess, you can hear what seems like gamely fighting one of the creatures, but it's hard to tell at this distance. Um, with a sw slight squeal, you hear the sudden death cry of one of the creatures cut off completely. Varys, what would you like to do? Cast dancing lights again? <laughs> That's right. Right after I deleted all those nice discs.
What color did you want the lights to be, by the way? Uh... Blue. <laughs> And where are you putting them? Around this general area of Flaley. I kind of remember where she's located. Oh, you can see her. She is fully in the torchlight. I guess circling her. <laughs> like a diamond. <laughs> What's the enemies I see? That are there enemies within those ra ranges of light? Uh, just the two that you already noticed. The one that's behind her to the right, and the one that she's immediately locked in combat with. If I go up to the one she's in combat, with, will I be flanking? Oh yeah. So can I get to her in my movement? I would, yeah, I would assume I could get to her within my movement. Yep. And I'll go rapier. Go ahead and roll a hit with advantage. A 14. A 14 will just hit. A 8. Ah, I'm, I'm coping. Alright. You stab into the back of this creature, and Flaley, as this charcoal-skinned, elvish individual approaches, you watch as they draw a thin, thin blade and shove it through the creature, the point of which stops just before your own shield. Um, the creature seems to give out a small gurgle, and then, almost as if it's died, it goes limp on the blade. I was about to ask, can I attack if I did a cantrip, or...? So I had to recast Dancing Lights. Is it not a bonus action? Uh, don't think so. Wait, wait, oh, wait. Oh, no, it's an action. Sorry, that would be yeah. no attack for you. Uh, remove those eight points of damage. So, <laughs> retcon that. I still move up, so. Okay. Uh, anything else, Ferris? Nah, now we know how much HP the enemy has. So. <laughs> uh, Philele. Uh, at this point, there is the charcoal-skinned individual standing in front of you. The creature is not dead. What would you like to do? Can I hit it with my torch again? Yep, go ahead and roll that d20 again. I got 15. Go ahead and roll 2d6. Seven. This time, as you impale the creature with the torch, shoving it deep into its chest, you watch as, from the center of it, the fire spreads out and it suddenly turns into ashes, the vegetation almost catching with fire as it spreads across the body. There is still the one creature behind you up here. And you still have your movement if you want it. I don't think I'm gonna move because I only have two hit points and it's gonna smack me, so I'm gonna stay right. Alright. Uh As another of the creatures seems to step into the light from the side, Varys, you watch as a small stone is slung in your direction. That is a 10 to hit? Nope. 
and for you, Flaley, you see a stone come flying from behind you. And that's a 13 to hit. Which I'm guessing doesn't hit. Arn, what's your armor class? Sorry, 13. Oh, yeah, no, I just asked you that. Um, <laughs> you can hear the sound of a wishing stone, and you watch as this small pebble, just missing your right cheek, goes flying past you and skitters off the ground in the distance. Palis, you also see a stone go flying past you, just missing the side of your helmet, not quite impacting you, and you feel a breath of relief as the stone goes right over your shoulder. Unfortunately, Versing is not so lucky, and... Oh. Arn, out of the corner of your eye, you watch as he seems to stumble as something embeds itself into his shoulder. Okay. Can I ask something? Yep. What happened to Gamely? You're not sure. Okay. He's off in the dark, killing things. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that's, that's your best guess, is he's somewhere left behind in the dark. Alright. For the first time ever, Versing is going to attempt to use his crossbow. That's good. <laughs> wow, it would not let me close that dialogue box. But wow. Okay, uh, firing at the creature to your right, Varus, you see a crossbow bolt impact the creature and <laughs> you watch as it drops to the ground, apparently dead. Palis. You see before you a single creature standing behind the new human in very, very pretty armor, um, as well as a number of creatures that you can hear behind you, but you're not able to see at this point. Is the armor nicer than mine? It's definitely on <laughs> par with yours. Hmm. Hmm. Jealous. A little bit. A little bit. All right. Um, strange human. I'll okay. I will yell out and point my glowing sword at the human and say, "Who are you? Reveal your identity to us. You're." And the name of your smith. I'm holding the button for that whole thing. Anyone there? She's in shock. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went and refilled my drink. <laughs> what happened? Um, I am pointing my glowing sword at you and saying, who are you and why are you down here? I'm Philele and I don't know why I'm down here. I've appeared out of nowhere, apparently. That's interesting. None of us really know why we're down here except for Var Varus, where are you? Here. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Question: Do they the veggie? 
or the the pygmy things uh are they coming from any direction that we can tell i know some stuff came from the left early best as you can tell um it's almost like they came from every direction in front of where you entered from you have this general feeling that they may have essentially been in a semicircle beforehand and you just walked straight into the center of it so it felt like they were coming from all sides but it was more of just a that's where they were previously sort of thing okay cool um i'll say arn lord von gallen stay to my <clears throat> sorry stay to my i'm gonna have to go get a drink after this turn I will move up, uh, move up towards Varys and the glowing lights, and uh, I can see one of them in one of the lights. Is that the only one I can make? That's the only one you can see at this point. Yes. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll use my action to uh, charge up on. All right. You go charging up on the crew. Damn, that shield is so much nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and roll an intimidation check for me. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Four. Okay. Uh, anything else, Payless? Yep, that's it. That's embarrassing, dude. Arn, what would you like to do? No As I'm told, I'm gonna... The... Well, Palus, you told me to stay to your right. But yeah, if you have, can. Have you pivoted? <laughs> At this point, Arn, you are left in complete darkness. You can see where Palus right. went. And based on where he went, it's a long ways away. Like, dude! Um, I'm- well, I'm just gonna- well, I can still see, um, Varys and, and the lights, though, sure. Which are a lot closer than Palis currently is. Yeah, I'm just gonna move up to here. And, um, yeah, so that's 50 feet. No, I'll just, I'll just move up to sort of behind there. And, uh, new bonfire on this little side. All right. As you... Rolls an 18 on his dexterity. Well, he's clever, isn't he? He, he succeeds. He manages to jump out of the way as the flames suddenly burst into life. Uh, you do get this weird little show as it sticks its plant-like little tongue out at you and you get this weird sense that there's little sprouts of some sort that seem to stick off it. All of them waving at you in some sort of mocking way. I really wish I had vicious mockery at this point. Oh. oh don't, don't do <laughs> Anything else, Aaron? Uh, just to ask, uh, can I see versing? You cannot see versing. Versing is in complete darkness. Alright, so I'm just gonna say to him, Von Gallen, keep up, son. You hear a slight grunt in response. Mm, that's not good. Is he down? Did we see him go? We saw him drop, didn't we? Last you saw, he was still standing. Okay. Oh, well, well, you know, then that's... Suck it up, princess. That's all I can do. Varys, what would you like to do? Uh, which enemies do I see? 
There is the single pygmy standing in the currently lit bonfire. Is that the one that was on the top right before? That came down, or is this a different one? Uh, no, this was... Yeah, that was the one on the top right there. I guess I'll move here. I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I'll just move there and wait. Alright. Uh, holding action, or...? Sure. I'll hold the... Sure, Bo. If someone I see comes into the light, that's an enemy. Okay. Uh, there is still the one pygmy up there that you could attack if you wanted to. Can I get in flanking range? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll flank it with Pale. Alright. And I'm assuming you're doing Rapier? Yeah. Go ahead and roll with advantage. Twenty-two. Go ahead and roll damage, and don't forget your sneak attack. The two d six. I believe it's two d six now for you, is it not? I believe so. Uh, that's a the 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 sixteen. I almost forgot I had to do math, so I was like, eh, now it's 16. <laughs> Just looking it up. Yeah, it's 2d6 for you. Alright. <laughs> wow. As you strike down the creature, its body seems to go limp and collapse to the floor. Stomp on it! Does it land in the bonfire? <laughs> Uh, that's actually an interesting question. Son of a bitch, it does too. He <laughs> watches the creature lands in the bonfire and the flames sort of tickle around its body. Anything else, Varus? Uh, nope. Philele. Get back up, like. You witness these individuals suddenly appearing in the light around you, um, managing to strike down two of the creatures with relative ease. You are now essentially alone in the cavern with three of them, the others seeming to have disappeared in the dark. I guess I can introduce myself to them, sort of? Uh, or should we move? You can talk to us anyway. Yeah, I guess I can. Because that's a free action, right? Completely free to talk all the time. Alright, so I introduced myself. Hi, Salele. Um, I'm assuming you guys are going to help me and or me help you. Um, and then I guess maybe we could try to come up with a plan on how to get out of this weird ice. Alive. My favorite condition. <laughs> Alive. Nothing else. I don't know. I don't want to move away from you guys because I have a torch. You do also notice four hovering orbs that seem to be giving off a small amount of light. Um, You're right. As well, if you want to. You can do what's called readying an action, where you can have something that triggers an attack from you. So, for example, let's say one of the creatures was suddenly to pop up. If it gets within melee range, you could say, um, as soon as it enters melee, I want to strike at it with my longsword. So I'd like... You cut off there. Also, were you guys originally heading north, right, on the map? Yes. I was like, yes. <laughs> we came south. Ish. Does anyone okay. see Lord Von Gallant? 
he's somewhere here behind me. We should get an eye on everyone, including Gamely, yep. before we move on. So if he's behind you, do you want me to move south with my torch so that you can see him in the light? Yep, let's, let's find everyone. We, so are we still in initiative order, Wolf? Can I yes, ready now? Lely, as you step forward and move forward into the cavern, although the light emits a good distance, you can't quite see anyone around you. Outside of the three that you already see, obviously. Okay, I was like, wait a second, I can see them. Okay. Um, I don't know how far I moved. Can I still move a little bit, or it doesn't tell me? Uh, you actually moved exactly 30 feet. Which is wow, all right. On system. One of the things is if you left click and hold your character, and then as you drag it a distance, uh, you right click it at any point, it'll bring up this little measuring tape when you move that tells you the distance you moved. Okay, okay. You'll see it on the video later once I send it out to you guys. Um, but yeah, it's this cool little trick. There's also, do you see that toolbar at the top left of the screen, which has like a mouse pointer and all these different other icons? Yes. One of them, which looks like a circle with a ruler on it, is actually a measuring tape that you can use to measure like Varys is doing like crazy on the map. <laughs> I see that. The only thing is once you switch to the measuring tape, you've got to go back to the mouse pointer before you can move your token. Gotcha, okay. Then I think that's the end of my turn. Perfect. Alright. Uh, essentially... Do, 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 do. Uh, gonna have everyone go ahead and make a perception check for me. At a 17. Oh, that is so odd. 21. Where do I click for perception check? So, on your character sheet, you see where yeah. it lists all your strength and everything, and then to the right of that, there's a giant box that says skills. There's one that says perception. If you click on that, it'll just roll it for you. I actually don't see the skill box. Is it below where it says armor class and initiative? Megapixels? I can't remember. I think it's 64 or 32 or something. Um, so, do you see the one that says proficiency bonus? It's the two beside the strength? Yes. Below that, there's one that says saving throws with strength, dexterity, constitution, is intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Yes. Below that, there's a really long box, which at the bottom of it says skills. I see it. Yeah. Okay. And then the one you want is perception. I got a 13. Alright. Arn, as you are looking around the cavern and completely immersed in all the dancing lights and pretty bonfires that you've made and the things that you've managed to kill, you are oblivious to anything going on. The rest of you- I'm, uh, I'm just stoked I hit stuff. You really are. It's an exciting time for Arn. Um, the rest of you are aware of the sounds of skittering feet in the darkness, um, the direction that most of you came, except for you, Flaily, it's- directly in front of you, a number of feet away that you can't quite tell. As you guys are kind of taking this in, Philele, you watch as three tiny stones go flying past your head, thankfully missing you and disappearing into the darkness behind you, but 
you get the feeling that there is something threatening in front of you. Did they come from the south where I'm facing? They came from directly in front of you, somewhere in the distance. So yes, okay. I skipped one turn, so let's roll that. Oh, oh, good. Palis, what would you like to do? I will yell out, Palele, did you find Lord Von Gal- <sighs> I, uh... I heard the footsteps, right, with my 21 perception? Oh yeah, you definitely heard them, and you were able to catch the stones go flying past as well. Okay, um, I'm going to look at uh, Varys and say, please stay with us this time. Please. And then I'm going to make my way back towards where we last saw Lord Varnga. We should be able to see Philele. Yep, she's entirely lit up by the torch she's carrying. Von Gallon's around here somewhere. 48 megapixels. Bursting, yell out. Marco! Who's Marco? <laughs> Anything else, Palis? Um, I'm gonna yell out to the group. We need to stay together and move together. We don't know what else is down here besides those little pig, or those, yeah, those little veggie mite things. Uh, protect yourself if you don't see anything. Try to dodge any attacks that come from the darkness. And then I will take the dodge action, go into my defensive stance. Alright. Arn, what would you like to do? I'm just going to keep up with these guys. Um, I'm going to ready a bonfire if I see any of these veggie pygmies come into the light. And I'm going to call out for versing. Versing! Say something! You do hear a voice answer, but it's not versing, and from the distance you hear Gamely calling out, Oi! I'm over here! F from which direction? Uh, somewhere to your left. Somewhere down there, oh. I'm not quite sure. Oh, it's quite close. <laughs> Come into the light! My mother always told me not to come into the light. Just get your ass over here. Anything else? Just on? so everyone knows, I only have seven more turns with a glowing sword. <laughs> uh, anything else, Arm? Uh, um, gamely, are there any crude? job. Guys, do we want to head for the rock that we were hiding behind before? Some shelter? I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Alright, well that's that's it. I'll just um, ready my bonfire. Alright, so as you do so, you watch as Gamely slowly makes his way into the light from the distance. Um... He looks a little worse for wear. He's definitely injured, but not dying. Um, he is alone. Ferris, what would you like to do? Um, for a message, do I need to see someone to cast it? I believe you do. Yeah, so I think one of them says... Vocal... It says VSM, so I'm not sure one of them has B-Sight. 
Uh, that's actually um, verbal, semantic, or material. I've just dropped it to the chat. Oh, okay. So if I were to message first thing, I need to see it. Basically. Essentially, yes. So, as a bonus, I'm gonna move three. The lights are not on me. More north... Western? In this direction? Okay, keeping in mind that you have to keep them within 20 feet of each other. Yeah, just keeping the one above me and just moving them northwest. Close to each other in a line. That sort of thing? Yeah. Alright, anything else? Uh... No. <laughs> Philaley, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm gonna move up. Follow the light, I guess. Cause we can, or should I move? I forgot his name. Um, is it Grimly the one that I can barely see in the light? Uh, Gamely, yes. Gamely, um, sorry, I was close. Call him Gimli if you want. <laughs> Alright, so since we can sort of see him, I think I'm gonna move since we've gathered everyone. And I think that's the end of my turn. Alright, so you guys watch as Philele begins moving back the way she came. Taking the light with her. Meanwhile, Palis, you get a slight shock as you see three more stones go flying past your face. Uh, once again managing to miss you entirely, but definitely a lot closer than they were last time. And Payless, what would you like to do? Okay, so I can only see Arn, Gamely, and no one else. Philaley has right? moved to your upper left side. Um, the kind of... outside of my lights radius. Yeah. Philaley okay. is up here. <laughs> Varus is up here. Okay. Um... Arn, do you have a free hand? A free hand? Yes. Yep. Okay, I hand you my sword, and then I am going to scoop you up. What? <laughs> okay. Arn, are you resisting Actually. this at all? No, no, it's cool. I'm going to climb on his back like a monkey. I've been wanting to do this <laughs> for so long. Okay. Um, first, uh, I'm going to use... I'm going to kind of... Oh, man. First, let me yell Lord Von Gallen, can you hear me? Respond if you are conscious and you can hear me. Blink twice. <laughs> yep. Um. Gosh. Um. We can't split up. I, I, fuck. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna hand you my sword and scoop you up. I will put you on your my back, piggyback style. If yep. I'm right there. Okay, then I will move up and uh, actually I move at you move at half speed right when you're carrying someone I can't remember um, 
I would say based on Arn's light weight and your immense strength, you'd be able to move at normal speed. Okay. Okay. I'm going to... <sighs> yeah, I will set Arn down in front. I, I don't know how to... Yeah, I don't know how to do the um, pin thing. Just click and hold. Yeah, I just want to set her down in front of me. Alright. Get my sword back and go back in the dodge, turning around to kind of face where those last stones came from. I also don't know how to turn myself in this. Oh good, I got it. Arn, what would you like to do? That's a damn good question, because I'm pretty sure we just moved away from versing. Gamely, where are you? <laughs> Can you ping? Okay. And was Arn aware of which direction those stones came? Uh, yes. Best as you can tell, they came from somewhere down in this region. Okay. Guess what, guys? Right. Yeah, it's, it's it's firebolt time. I'm just going to shoot in the direction that the um, stones came. All right, go ahead and roll the hit with disadvantage. So you're going to have to roll it twice. Ugh. Neither were good. You watch as the ball of flame disappears into the distance and eventually sputters out. Do I see anything as it's traveling? A lot of cavern. Nothing super interesting. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I'm just gonna... Can I ready an action again? Uh, you would have used your action to cast that fireball. Yeah, that's it. Alright. Gamely is going to... Yep, gonna make his way up here, once again appearing on the edge of the light, because that's as far as he can get. And Varys, what would you like to do? I'd like to move dash here. And wait. Alright. Where are you going? <laughs> Flyly, what would you like to do as you guys slowly make your way through the cavern? I don't know if I should follow Varys or stand here and fight with the rest of you because I'm really low health. I think we're all really low on health. Especially Versing, who's lying somewhere in the eyes in the dark. <laughs> You're right. I'll stay here and fight with you guys because I'm supposed to be brave. <laughs> Alright. Um... Can I actually, I'm sorry. Can I light a torch and throw it to, like, be able to see into where things are throwing things at us? Yep, I'm gonna have you go ahead and make a dexterity check for me. So just on your character sheet, just click the dexterity button. Twenty-one. Very nice. Got some good luck today. Alright. Lighting a small torch as I go looking for a torch icon, you throw it as far as you can. And as I roll this, damn. As it lands, you suddenly see an unconscious form laying in the middle of the ice. Does he look dangerous? He 
he currently looks like he is not having a good day. Okay, I'm gonna stay where I'm at. And I guess that's the end of my turn. Amazingly, even though he's on the ground, none of the pygmy creatures managed to land a hit on him. Because, you know, that makes sense. As you guys watch, the individual laying on the ground, which was once shuddering slightly with breath, suddenly goes completely still. Oh shit. Palis, what would you like to do? I have a very long talk about teamwork with Varys. But what I'm <laughs> going to do... <laughs> None of this is my fault. Rogue went rogue. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you said Lord or uh, Versing is uh, prone. He is prone on the ground, and as you watched, with his body suddenly engulfed in light, he seems to have, um, best as you can tell, let out his last breath. Oh, fucking bollocks! All of you stay here, gamely. Protect them with your life. I... Boy, can't paladins have bonus action. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run back towards Versing. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I can't do anything after that. Okay, as you come up to the body, you notice that part of it appears to be impaled by a semi sharp stone that he appears to have fallen on. Um, the Normally, well, best you can tell, four-foot stone appears to have broken off slightly as his body seems to have impaled himself on it. Um, oh, oh. He has slid entirely to the ground, and although the top has broken off the stone in question, there's still about three and a quarter feet standing tall between his body and the top of the stone. Arn, what would you like to do? I'm just going to move to the edge of the light here. And ready my bond. Alright. Triggering action being anything stepping into the light? Uh, yeah, I guess. On that note, Gamely is going to slide over here in front of you, Arn, and take up a position. Varys, what would you like to do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't you want to run away? Run further into the darkness? Actually, Varys, go ahead and make a perception check for me. That'd be a six. You are completely oblivious to what's going on behind you. You can see Philele where the light is emitting around her, but everything beyond that is well beyond your vision, and as far as you know, everyone is still making their way towards you. So based on that rule, I'm just gonna shuffle the lights forward a bit and move 30 feet. <laughs> Is 
this small, or am I just like imagining things? It's small. So it's not like a wall here. Or I guess like a ledge. Uh, no, it's like that same ledge that you walked up on the first time. Oh, okay. It's about half a foot high. Philele, what would you like to do? I'm gonna follow the door. <laughs> but keep her safe, because I feel like something's gonna happen. And fighting alone sucks. Alright, did you want to ready an action or anything? Yes. So, do I draw my sword? Like, is that what I say? I draw my sword while I move. Um, assuming you still have the sword drawn, it's essentially you're just getting ready for anything to pop out at you, and if you do see something, you take that chance to strike out at it. Essentially, you're waiting for something to come into range of your attack. Okay. Um, I'm walking backwards, apparently, but that's okay. That's fine. Uh, and I guess I end my turn here. Alright. Palis, as you stand watch, you see three small stones appear from the darkness flying towards you. Not a fucking one of them hits you, though. Oh, thank goodness. So they're not baseball players. Sorry? I said so they're not baseball players, because none of them hit. I was trying to make a joke. We uh, I'm Palis. not. I'm not funny. Palis, what would you like to do? Um. Uh. I kneel down. I try to remove bursting from this rock, and then I'm gonna try to stabilize. Go ahead and make two medicine checks. First one's a 14. Second one's a 6. Alright, as you attempt to pull Bursing's body from the stone, you, without too much delicacy, pull straight upwards and you can hear some tearing sounds as you seem to cause more damage to his body as you pull him off this large, rock-like structure. Aware of the damage you've done, you've suddenly become extremely worried, and looking him over, you're not sure how you can possibly help this individual who lays before you, completely cold like the ice below you. He's dead dead? As far as you can tell, there are no vital signs on Versing. Okay, uh, if I still have any move action left, I'm going to hoist him over my shoulder of my shield arm, <coughs> get my sword, and move as much as I can back towards uh, where I left the other. Okay, um, for this you're only going to be able to move half movement. Arn, you watch as Palis lifts the body of Versing and begins walking back towards you. After having violently pulled him off the stalagmite that he was impaled on. What would you like to do, Arn? Shit! I yell out to Varys. Varys, get back here. I think Von Gallen is dead. Um, does anybody have any healing potions? (laughs) 
Guys? I'm healing working. potions? I don't think I do. I don't think anyone in our party has a healing potion. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Look, there's nothing I can do to help versing. As far as I know, think... Gamely might have something, but we don't... That's an NPC, so... I thought Lord Von Gallen had a one potion left. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna check him. So I'm gonna come over here to you guys. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Thirteen. You comb over his body, pulling through the pack and other personal pockets that he has on his um, outfit. You're unable to find anything though. Shit, 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 shit. That's not entirely true. You do find 71 gold pieces, 4 silver pieces, <laughs> and 6 copper pieces. Oh, well, you know, that's fantastic. What else would you like to do, Arn? Uh, there. Can I do a medicine? Um. Having already searched over the body, you've unfortunately used your action up. Yeah, okay. There, there's nothing else I can do. Alright. Gamely is going to head over... Yep, right over here. And take up a defensive position on the other side of you, Palis. Um, kind of taking on a ready stance. Varys, you can hear the call echoing throughout the cavern, and two words seem to continue to echo even after the normal voice seems to have disappeared. You can hear the two words of versing dead just bouncing around seemingly inside your head. I guess I'll just hold action. Alright. Uh, trigger being... Ferris? Huh? I'm sorry. I guess... Sorry, what do you want the trigger to be for uh, me to hold? I don't know. <laughs> um... Can I just end my turn? Instead of holding an action? Sure. Uh, I'll just end my turn. Bilele, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving towards... Uh... North. So uh, I'm towards Varus there? And, yeah, and I'm gonna ready my action again so that if anything pops up, I can. Alright. And as you get closer, you see the charcoal skinned male kind of standing there, somewhat shocked look on his face. I'm gonna end my turn. Okay. Um. Palis and Arn, go ahead and make a perception check for me. It's an eight. Eighteen. Alright, caught up as you are with the situation going on. You can hear the distant sound of scuttling as feet seem to be moving away from you. Um, you're not quite sure where they're headed, but it definitely seems to be away from your current position. Payless, what would you like to do? <clears throat> uh, moving at half speed with Von Gallen, right? Uh, at this point, you can move at full speed. It's just you used half your speed to pick him up. Oh, okay.
All right, I'm going to move up 30 feet and say, you two need to follow follow me and uh, back to Arn and Gamely. And I'm going to hold action for when they catch up. I'm going to move another 30 feet looking for uh, Varys and Philele. Sounds good. Arn. I will follow. Um <clears throat> Just gonna kind of flank Palis and keep my bonfire ready. All right, Palis. As Arn kind of catches up, do you want to use your dash now, or do you want to wait for Gamely? I'll wait for Gamely. And he follows without any hesitation. He is actually going to... Oh, I was about to say he's going to dash past you, but you beat him to it. Varys, in the distance, you can see uh, Palis carrying a apparently limp body and gamely approaching. Like, we've tried the medicine check with him, right? For a bit. Not <laughs> for versing? I did, but I rolled really sh poorly. I can make my Do it again! Dash action and use medicine check. Go ahead. Here's the thing, I'm terrible at medicines. I don't know why you have the rogue to do this. That'd be a five. Looking him over, based on the gapping wound in his chest area, he seems to be dead. Yeah, and I end my turn. I used all my movement. <laughs> Philele, what would you like to do? Um, I guess keep going, because uh, he's carrying a dead guy, and there's no reason for me to check it too, right? Not unless you want to. I'm good. I'm just going to keep walking. Alright. I'm assuming you're holding that ready action? Yes, I am. I was about to say that. <laughs> So is this brown thing a ledge, or is it a ball? You said it was a ledge, right? Uh, the one in front of you is a ledge. It's about half a foot tall. So I can step up onto that. Yep. And I guess we do free movement now since we're out of combat, it looks like it. Yes, at this point you guys are out of initiative as you can hear silence reigning over the cavern once more. Cool. I'm just gonna move and have the uh, dancing lights hang above me. Palis. Or, or can I form them into one being, well, like one solid light? So you don't have to move four. <laughs> Pilus, are you out of hails? Going to give you yes. Full of them, blood. As soon as I can find your name on all this. This label them light. <laughs> Uh, you should have control over all four blood. Okay. Alright. What would you guys like to do as the silence begins echoing through the cavern? Palis, you carrying a unconscious and possibly dead 
conversing over your shoulder. You see Philele and Varys disappearing into the distance as Arn and Gamely kind of surround you. Let's uh, try to catch up to Philele and Varys. How fast are the two of you moving, by the way, Varys and Philele? I've been going like full 30. <laughs> Speed walking, I guess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um. Payless so 30 ish and, feet. Yeah, Payless and Arn, you can see them moving at a relatively standard speed. They're not running forward, but they're definitely moving not so much with a haste, but with a regular pace. Can I try and listen to anything? Go ahead and make a perception check. Pylus, what do we need to do to get you hails back? I'm going to uh, have to rest. A full rest. I don't think this is the place to do it. You cannot hear anything, Varus. Should we do some more medicine checks, see if we can at least stabilize it? Under common, can I yell out Javir? <laughs> we, uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'll lay him down. Let's try. Will you do a check and I'll assist? Alright, go ahead and roll a medicine check, Palis, with advantage. Um, blood, you do not hear anything in response. Other than Gamely, who seems to appear beside you. So there's not turns now, like, I can just. Keep Free moving movement. with. Okay. Free movement, role play. Free role. Can you go and knock Varus out, please, for that? Yes. Please. <laughs> I'll go knock her out. What <laughs> was trauma to the head? All right, Philele, go ahead and roll to hit with whatever weapon you're going to attempt to knock Varus out. Varus, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving. <laughs> Can I just like smack her with my shield? I'll allow it. Ah, uh... uh, twenty-six. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and roll a d20 and uh or sorry Philele, just go ahead and roll a strength check only a 17 unfortunately seeing the attack coming and being used to being smacked around Varus is able to dodge out of the way of your shield um sneaky little bugger yeah you can't quite make the connection well, I stopped moving, so it's not like I'm moving forward. Palis, as you look over the fallen Von Galen, you're not quite sure what you can do for him. His He's not bleeding anymore, which to you is not a good thing, considering there is a giant hole in his chest. His body has gone completely cold, and you can see where the skin has begun to turn paler than it normally is. Um... There is no sign of life on this individual. I just look up at Arn and shake my head. I'm not having it. There are... There are people that can bring him back, but we have to get out of here. We have to get them... Get him to... Can I, um... Whoa, can I roll a religion check or something to know how long he would be good for? His body would be good, <laughs> would be fresh uh, to be able to be raised? For this, I'm going to have you roll another medicine check. 
Can I assist on that too? Um, I would have you roll a separate one just because it's more knowledge based than actual physical doing anything. Okay. Thirteen. Nineteen! I'm very versed in this kind of injury. Amazing. Alright, putting your heads together and Payless being somewhat concerned that Arn so quickly comes to this logic, although it does sound right to you, you figure that with uh, Divine Magic it's at least a few days um, if you find the right healer in that sense who can return the spirit to body. However, you realize that with the amount of damage done to the body and with the divine intervention that you're going to need, you need to find the right individual. And best as you can tell, the ones that you know nearby are at least a week and a half to two weeks travel time from here. Is there some sort of... Go ahead, Philali. I was just going to ask if there's somewhere we could bury the body down here to maybe pay respect. Currently, you are in a cavern of complete stone. There's um, not like a hole? Uh, not that you can see, no. Yeah. Is there so, some sort of amazing wild magic summoning that I can do? Nothing that you've experienced. I would say that uh, he'll probably have to be entombed or interred in uh, his family crypt or plot. While all that's going standing? on, by the way, you notice Varys bouncing around the edges of the cavern. Yelling in a language none of us understand. Yeah, I just right? keep yelling on their common. <laughs> yeah, as far as the rest of you are concerned. Is, isn't Javier a, what was it, a Death Reaper or something like that? Spirit Reaper, yes. Spirit Reaper. What's a Spirit oh, yeah. Reaper? Um, essentially, it's a religious order in the world of Tylos that performs a lot of the last rites for those who have passed. Um, think of like a priest standing over a funeral. That's a lot of what the Spirit Reapers do. They're the last people that guide the spirits of those who have fallen into the hands of Kriya and the afterlife. Can I look okay. for another tunnel or way out of here? Ah, uh, you can, but I can tell you, you haven't found one yet. A, sp a spirit reap is known for returning spirits to bodies? Quite the opposite. They're known for guiding the spirits from the body to the afterlife. And in the same time, I keep yelling on their common. <laughs> you can probably guess what it is. <laughs> I I look at Arn and maybe maybe the stroper could help. Uh, I think it's our it's our only option. Varys, you do eventually find a tunnel that seems to lead out of this cavern in a direction that you're pretty sure is not the way you entered from. I see the torch that I was thrown earlier. If not, then we haven't come this way. <laughs> you do not see the torch that you threw earlier. I think I'm just going to yell behind me as loud as I can to the others and I found a way out and just head through the tunnel. Goddamn drow. <clears throat> Fill it. Is Philly going? What? No, I'm right here. I'm just looking around. Uh, do you have any healing capabilities? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, okay. 
Gamely, how good are you at tracking? Um, unfortunately not nearly as good as I am at uh, killing things. It's quite good at killing things. I take pride Orin. in that. Orin, you're not good at tracking, right? Philele, are you any good at that kind of thing? That, what's that, survival? Yes, that I have be. zero in survival. Whatever that is. I have is. a one. I can try. Okay, so... Maybe the two of you work together, gamely, you protect them, and I'll take up the rear. My sword's about out of light. Let's try to find Varys and get out of here. If we can, find this Javir. Jover? Jennifer. Or Jennifer? It's Jennifer? Okay. <laughs> and as you say that, you watch as the sword suddenly sputters and goes out. <laughs> Alright. I knew I should have bought an explorer's pack. Well, I've got torches, and I presume so does Philalys. So, I'm going to light a torch. Is, is, the, is the darkness still magical? Uh, as far as you can tell, it's definitely overpowering your normal dark vision, and it's making it really hard to see. Okay. By touch, I'm going to light a torch. Alright, and as you do so, it suddenly springs to life. Cool. The three so I'm, I'm tracking. Still here. Go ahead and make a perception check. Or sorry, wisdom check. Who's making the check? Uh, Philele, Vera, uh, sorry, Philele, Palis, and Arn. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Best as you can tell, the voice seemed to originate somewhere to this direction from your current position, but you have no freaking clue exactly where it came from. Varys, as you you're making your way along... You notice that the tunnels are starting to become smaller and smaller, closing in both in width and in height. Okay. I, rolled a, I rolled a 21 on survival. Should I roll my survival check? If you want to. I got a 17. Alright, the two of you are quite capable in telling that this is a stone foundation, and... Based off your experience in tracking, you're not going to be able to track any footprints because it's kind of hard to leave uh, footprints on stone. Alright, well, let's just walk. Well, I'm technically injured, so I would have been <laughs> bleeding. I don't know. Alright. Um, Ferris, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. That's a nine. As you're walking forward, the ground suddenly gives out before you. You are completely unable to dodge out of the way. Your uncanny reflexes somewhat slowed by your concern for Javir. Um, you fall about 15 feet before you land in a pit of some sort. Um, you take... Nine points of bludgeoning damage as you hit the bottom. Well, I'm knocked out. I had, uh, five hit points left. <laughs> Alright. Go ahead and roll a uh, death saving throw there, Varus. Uh, 
and mark off the first failure. <laughs> Alright, what are the rest of you doing? I just, I'm just gonna walk and, you know, hope that we... At least leave the find Varys. Map so I know where my body is. <laughs> I don't oh. see my icon anymore, Actually, so... Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. Unconscious? <laughs> no, you're, you're unconscious. Oh, yeah, no, you're completely unconscious. So, uh, yeah, those go bye-bye. Can you at least show me where my icon is so I'm not dumb and lose where I am on the map? I'll do that for you. Uh, do, 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 do. Thank you. I know I'm unconscious, so... Where's a little skull and crossbones icon? There we go. Alright, um... Are the rest of you just following Arn as she wanders along? Yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna walk along pretty slowly. Um, can I also have a cantrip? Uh, which one would you like ready? Mm, um, probably bonfire. Okay. As you continue along the way, you... Where are you headed to exactly? Yeah, good question. Um, sort of to the north and east, which was the last time we heard Varys' voice. Alright. As you make your way along, you follow what is apparently a wide open path. Um, go ahead and make a perception check for me. <laughs> We're fucked, guys. Wow. I'm following her, so should I also do a perception check? Unfortunately, she's the one leading. Damn it. It takes you guys the better half of about 25 minutes sliding along this wall to the northeastern quadrant. Blood, go ahead and make another death save. Before you guys manage to find a small opening, um, moving you up here. Wow, my death saves are not doing me too well. Go ahead and mark off your second failure there, Varys. Um, Arn, you are eventually able to find a small tunnel which seems to lead further in, leaving the cavern behind, but also seeming to shrink as it goes further and further along. Any sign of Varys? From what you can see so far, no. Would you like to go down the path? Guys? I say yes? Wait, 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 wait. Gamely. Aye. You're looking in a little better shape than the rest of us. Do you- would you mind taking the lead? I, uh, suppose I could, um... Fortunately, I don't have one of those fancy lights. Do you want to lend me one? Yeah, I'll give him my torch. Alright, as you guys go through... Do -do -do -do. You enter a narrow cavern-like area. Um, to your right, you can see what appears to be another little shelf of ice, similar to the one that you found in the cavern before. And there appears to be a small path that leads off to the left. Gamely looks back at you and says, uh, Right, so uh, any preference on which direction we take? Is my screen supposed to be black at the moment? Thank you! No worries. So we can see Varys, but characters can't. Exactly. Can we do an investigation check to see whether we can see any 
I don't know, bits of fabric or blood or anything that might lead us. Yeah, yeah, my mask fell off. <laughs> A respectable 17. Would anyone else like to help with that? I uh -huh. I can feel Palis fuming. I got an 18. Let's just say there isn't a gift that betrays the range of emotions I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Are you still bringing Versing along with you, by the way? Yes. Yes, I am carrying him. Okay. Um, as you guys kind of hunt around, you can see a small trail of blood that appears to lead along the path to the left. I guess we're going left. Yep. Varus, go ahead and make your third death save. Make it! Succeed! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <That's a critical laughs> Alright, mark it off. Does it- does it ha rolling a critical one count for double? It does. I lost all three anyway, so... All right. Um, I'm assuming the rest of you are following. Yes. Aren going with. Yep. As you make your way along the path, you come to a about a five foot by five foot hole in the ground where you can see fifteen feet below you the body of Varus. Not moving, not breathing, and very much looking like poor Von Gallen over your shoulder there, Palis. I'll lay Von Gallen down and start climbing down the hole. Where exactly would you like to lay him? Um... Don't lose track. Sorry, you're breaking off there. Almost purposely. Uh, I just, uh, I tell Gamely, I set the body next to him and I say, don't lose track of him. Don't let him run off. <laughs> I'll ensure he stays right where he should. How far down? Hey, you How don't far... know. There are rats <laughs> and stuff down here. I'm in some kind of giant bug ready for it. Uh, how, how deep is, it, is this hole? About 15 feet. Alright, well I'm going to jump down with my um, <laughs> ring of feather. You have a ring of feather full? Yeah, we got it in the vault from the, um, the militia. Oh, the, the, the one you stole. <laughs> the one! The one that Vera stole. <laughs> and the whole party is starting to disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so It was um, a gift from a friend, alright? <laughs> Arn, at your body is the unmoving, or at your feet is the unmoving body of Varus. Medicine check. Go ahead and roll. Palis, are you making your way down the wall too, or no?
Sorry, my internet's being dodgy again. No worries. Um, were you gonna make your way down the wall too, or no? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make an athletics check for me. And Philele, what would you like to do at this time? Fourteen to climb down. Lose can you hear me? Ah, oh, now I can. There you go. Oh, okay. Sorry, I said I was gonna do the same thing, so I'll roll for athletics, right? Perfect. Oh my. All four of you. Three of you. Wrong number. <laughs> 21. Alright. So, carefully heading down the wall. Palis and Philele, you join up next to Arn as she's looking over the body. Arn, you in this now cramped space are unable to stand up once more as the two heavily armored individuals join you in this five foot by five foot wide hole. Dude! <laughs> you uh, are able to tell that Varus appears to be dead, is not breathing, and his neck appears to be somewhat broken, um, as if he fell down the hole and snapped his vertebrae along the way. Fucking drow. Where's your 23 dicks now? <laughs> what would you like to do? Oh, what can I do? Oh, I want to... I want to dig really deep here, Wolf, and, you know, do some amazing wild magic summoning based on just raw emotion. My fear of abandonment. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Yes. We're probably all going to die in a big flaming ball of plasma goo. I'm ready for it. You guys ready to make bear? <laughs> Pulling on every ounce of emotion you have, you unleash your magic. And for a moment, there is a ball of fire that appears before you, before being snuffed out entirely. Overrun with the emotion as you are, you are unable to make your magical connection and hold on to it. Alright, nothing, guys. Can I climb back up the wall to get out of the hole? Go ahead and make an athletics check. Ten. You make it about five feet before you slide back to the bottom, the weight of your armor stopping you from going any further. I'm gonna hand Philele some rope. Say, so sort that shit out. <laughs> okay. So, can I, like, grapple out of the hole this, with this rope? Go ahead and make a dexterity check to throw the rope up. Eleven. As you toss the rope up, a unready gamely just misses it with his fingers, unable to catch it, and the rope comes falling back onto your face. Can I yell at him to pay the hell attention? And then throw it again. Go ahead and make another dexterity check. Funny. This time, as you toss it up, he manages to catch it. Um, he's holding it and kind of looking around confused. I'm going to yell to him that I'm going to climb up so that he can brace himself so that I don't pull him down. Alright, go ahead and make an athletics check. 21. <laughs> Oh, this is great. As you 
begin your ascent. The weight of your armor and the weight of your body is unfortunately too much for the poor elven individual at the top. And there's a moment of fear as you realize <laughs> Gamely comes tumbling over the edge, falling directly on top of you. The one, two, three, four, five of you are now stuck in the hole together, each piled on top of each other in a tumble of arms, legs, and torso. Can I throw him back out of the hole? Uh... <laughs> or throw someone out of the hole? That's fine. I will just misty you step out of the hole, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a moment of uh, shifting as suddenly the bald elven individual disappears from the bottom of the hole and appears at the top. I assume I can't carry the rope with me when I do that. Unfortunately not. However, those of you still stuck in the hole suddenly hear the squeaky voice of Varys coming through. What the fuck? I'm gonna push everyone off, off of Varys. Stand up, get everyone off of him. Can I see somewhere to secure this rope to, or rock or something? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check there, um, Arn. Oh, wait. Fuck me dead. With disadvantage, seeing as the only light uh, source is in the bottom of the pit. Look, I really can't roll worse than that. Can I toss my torch out? Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make a dexterity check. To throw my torch, or should I just wait? Yep. Okay. I got a 20. You toss the torch up, and as it goes sailing over the edge of the pit that you're in, Arn, you are able to spot a column just a little ways back here, which, uh, based on what you can tell, looks secure enough to tie the rope to. Okay, I'm gonna light... We've got... How many torches have we got between us? That I have eight. Because I had a... Oh no, so Gamely had a torch as well. Alright, so I've got a torch and you guys have got a torch. There's one currently in the hole and there's one that you have laying... Well, laying on the ground near you. Yeah, so I'll grab that, and I'm going to go and secure the rope to this column. Alright, go ahead and give me a wisdom Wait. check. I'm a spooky ghost. To three. Are you going to tell me she doesn't know how to tie this rope? <laughs> Alright, you tie the rope around, and you secure it as best as you can. Alright. Dear God. I'm going to, uh, try to, uh, cheerleader toss, you know, <laughs> like, put my hands together and someone step on them and boost them up the side. Uh. Who would you like to attempt this? Laylee, you want to go first? Sure. All right. Palis, I'm going to have you make a pure strength check. For Laylee, you are going to give me an athletics check. I got a 14. If I make it, can I do like a cool superhero landing? <laughs> Six. It takes a lot out of you, Palis, but you manage to hoist her up just far enough that she can launch herself to the edge. You don't quite make it far enough to get out of the hole, but Philele, at this point, you have a grip on the edge and you're currently hanging just off the side of it. Can I pull myself up? Go ahead and make a strength check. Thirteen. It takes a lot, but you manage to get yourself with the heavy armor you're wearing just over the edge, rolling onto your side to safety. Bayless, go ahead and give me a perception check. Can I get, do it with disadvantage? I'm pretty, uh, occupied. Yes. Clap. 
Classic Payless. You are... Seven. Extremely, extremely aware of the fact that there is still three of you left in the hole. And... Yeah. Um, other than that... Yeah, you don't really notice anything. Alright, Gamely, your turn. And I put my hands into the basket again. Another That's it, check. shape. Sixteen this time. Alright. As you launch the much lighter Gamely up over the edge, you watch as his face smashes off the side. He does manage to catch himself, but there's a little bit of blood that rains down on you. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he essentially smashed his face off the side and kind of uh, cut himself while doing so. So, he got covered in a little bit of blood, but he managed to get a handhold and pull himself up. Okay, cool. Need to rig up a harness so we can um, hoist Varus up. I uh, will kneel over Varus and whisper, You reckless fool, I told you I would help you with whatever you needed. Why did you do Varus, you can hear this. Five hit points, or... You have one hit point. Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh god, that fucking hurt! <laughs> the fuck? As you're watching, Palis, you see the once broken neck shift itself probably painfully back into place. And you suddenly realize that Varus is wearing around his neck an amulet that you've never seen before. Zombie! Kill it! I use Divine Sense to see if he's undead. He is not undead, and from the looks of him, he appears to be, although barely, he is alive. You idiot. Come on, can you move? Can I get up? <laughs> um, I mean, it's gonna hurt like hell, but probably. I'll try and get up. Here, I'll I'll help and try to. He sways on his feet a little bit as you help him stand up, but Ferris is once again standing. What the hell is that? Is that a do reckless bullshit and get away with it, Jim? Or necklace, I should say, pin it. Do I know what the item is that... You do, it's actually in your list of items. It's the Parapet. Per... Periapt, sorry. Wow, that was... Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parapet, I don't know what I'm reading. Yeah, it's the Periapt. Periapt. Wow. It's a hard word, don't worry about it. Oh, fucking bollocks. Arn! Yeah. He's alive. Good, slap him. <laughs> nice slapping. All right. One point of damage. Go ahead and make an unarmed attack. <laughs> Non-lethal damage. That's pride damage. <laughs> On my pride. Eight Jeez. 
Barris, what is your armor class have? Uh, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Palis, you managed to make contact with the skin very, very lightly. Um, thankfully, through his roguish meandering and general personality, he manages to roll with the punch, and although you leave a very, very nice bruise, it doesn't manage to knock him out again. He is still somewhat standing. I grab the rope and hand it to him, and then start tying it around him. Wait. If I tug on the rope, does it just come free? How hard would you like to tug? I mean, I'd give it a test tug. Go ahead and roll a strength check. And that's also what I'm gonna talk. Six. It seems to be extremely sturdy. You're unable to pull it off. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tie out Barris. So I'm gonna instruct um, Philele to I don't know, give him a hand, brace the rope, or something. Yeah, can I hold the rope? Also, since it's tied, just like hoist them up with. Okay, are you actually pulling them up or just holding onto it? I'm gonna hold onto it. Okay, Varys, you are tied to a rope, and... Yeah. Is this like one of those kid leashes that you see? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like <laughs> I give it an extra... Like... When I tie it, I pull it extra tight. Yeah, so... <laughs> Should we just leave him leashed? <laughs> Should I roll any like check while I'm holding this rope or uh, at the current time you're just holding a rope. Alrighty. Gamely. Hi. Lately. Can y'all help me get him up? Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I should pull him up, huh? We got okay. to pull him. No, dude. That was all sorts of gibberish. What? Can, can he not, like, um, climb out of the hole himself? Oh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to be nice. I'm charitable, okay? I help those in need. It's my... That's what I do. I ain't getting paid enough for this shit. On well, to the other side. <laughs> You're getting paid? Right, Nothing I can am. shake my optimistic attitude, okay? Stay positive here. Who's paying you, Gamely? The bloody spirit reaper paid me in advance for this. Is anyone gonna pull this rope? I'll pull it, I'll pull it. Go ahead and make a strength check. I'll give, if I can, I'll give her advantage by... Yeah, 15. ...hoisting him, or pushing him. Alright. Um, Philele, go ahead and roll that twice. So another time, and you're going to take the higher of the two. Eighteen. Varys, there is a sudden jerk on the rope, and then you are being lifted into the sky. Um, go ahead and make a acrobatics check with disadvantage for me. Eleven. You manage to maintain your balance for about half the ride up, but at about the eight foot height out of the hole, you suddenly flip over and for the rest of the pull, you are bouncing your head off the wall as you are pulled and tugged up this steep incline. Eventually you are pulled out of the hole itself and only Palis is left below. It's what you deserve. I'll try to climb out on my own. Go ahead and make an athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, 
11. It takes you a couple of tries, but you do eventually manage to pull yourself up and out of the hole. So I've um, squared up to Gamely, and I want to question him about this comment. What do you mean, the Spirit Reaper? Well, he bloody well paid me to protect him. It's what I was uh, told to do, and he gave me the coin up in advance. So when was the last time you saw him? About an hour before you lot showed up in the village. Why did he need protection? Bloody hell if I know. Came to us, myself and my partner, who's unfortunately now deceased. Which I forgot to take the money off his body. We'll have to go back for that. Uh, came to us and uh, told us that he needed some uh, escorting to the village. Said something about his deity or some other saw some village burning to the ground and he was supposed to stop it. I did a good job. Did a shite job, if you ask me. So do you have any ideas on why we're in this cavern? Because that fucking thing decided to come down here. Is that fucking thing... Ferris? Is that the charcoal asshole who fell down the hole? <laughs> That's him, that's how we like to refer to him too. Aye, that'd be him then. And there's glaring in my leash. Damn right. You're okay. saying leash. I agree with the big one. Damn can right. I can I cut, try and cut through it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah. Go ahead and make a Can rapier attack. Can I threaten him? Make a light roll? Uh, a rapier attack. Just normal or disadvantage? Because I'm not sure how this... Are you gonna try and intimidate there, Philele? Yeah, I am. Varus? Disadvantage. Let me roll that again. Uh, 20. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, 7. With two swipes of your rapier, you managed to cut through half the rope. Can I shimmy the way out? I don't know how much I cut off, so... As you guys are watching, Varys is currently cutting through the rope. Can I... Smack him with my shield to maybe knock him back out. Go ahead and make a strength check. Varys, go ahead and make a dexterity save with disadvantage. Uh, 17? Uh, I'm sorry. I rolled a strength save and not strength. Do you want me to reroll? Yeah, for that one, yeah, because it may make a difference. 19. Yeah, that's <laughs> Paris, Thank Cross for that. The last thing you see before sudden darkness takes over your vision is the shiny shield connecting with the side of your face. That that makes me just unconscious. Just unconscious. So so one hit point. <laughs> Still one hit point, but you are knocked out for the foreseeable future. And he stays leashed. Half leashed, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Through all this, I have not gotten up. I just rolled over onto my back when I heard him get knocked out and his body hit the ground. And I hold up a thumbs up and then just keep laying there. Do you need to rest, Palus? Yes. Palus is tired. Alright. You guys now have a dead versing, unconscious Varus, you're out of the hole. What would you like to do at this point? Do you want to set up camp and set watches? I hold up a thumbs up. Okay. Alright. 
pulling out your sleeping wear, sleeping bags, whatever it is you need, you guys set up a very, very miserable camp as it is, um, being underground in a tunnel. Who would like to take first watch? I have a question before we do watch. Is it still cold from the ice? Uh, it's surprisingly not. It is damp and cooler in the tunnel, but not uncomfortable, so... Um, having been in the rainforest for so long, it's definitely not the... Oh god, what what is the regular temperature? Like 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit that you would be used to in a rainforest? Um, uh, no, it's much higher than that in a rainforest. Yeah, I'm not good at Fahrenheit. What the hell is the Fahrenheit? It's Fahrenheit? okay. Uh, Fahrenheit rainforest average is 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you. How do you know that? I recently ran a campaign in a rainforest and I'm running another one now. Right, you are. So it'd be about 93 Fahrenheit. That's about 34 Celsius for the rest of us. Hmm. Uh, Underground is usually cooler, though. Oh yeah, sorry, I was talking about the rainforest. For the underground, you're looking at around 85-ish Fahrenheit, which, having closed that, is approximately 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. Geothermal heating. I will uh, roll over and push myself up, and then move Varus over to by that column that the rope was tied to and then tie him to the column <laughs> <laughs> all right take his weapons no no we don't want that yeah because what it, if he wakes up and cuts himself out of the rope yeah but he needs to be able to protect himself being tied to it. I mean, I'm I'm only I'm only like tying his waist. He can untie it himself. I just I don't know. I don't want him to be defenseless in case we get attacked in <laughs> while we're resting. You're doing a um oh what's it called uh where where you're making a point. Yes. And then I will move uh. Lord Von Gallen's body across the hallway is, uh, does the pit that we, that Varys fell in take up the whole pathway? Uh, it only takes up about five feet of it. There's still an avenue to get around on either side. Is it the black box or is that something different? No, it's the black box. I'll take first watch. Okay, I appreciate that, but uh, I'm going to move Lord Von, Von Gallen's body over to the left side of the uh, hallway, and I will lean up, or I will sit, uh, and put my back against the wall and try to rest there. I'll take my helmet off. Guessing Show off I do, beautiful I get golden the full rest. <laughs> Alright, um, so what's the watch order that we're doing here tonight? I can go next. I'll take third. And Gamely will go last. Surprisingly... Let me just double check this. Yep. Surprisingly, Arn. You manage your four hours without any sort of confrontation or pygmy creatures or anything else popping out of the walls. It's actually rather boring as you sit there watching the relative darkness. And as you sense the time pass, you realize that your shift is probably over. I, I would, can I have used my time to... Uh... Search my arcana for any way to help. Go ahead and make an arcana check. Seventeen. Even with all the amazing powers that the spells you weave have, 
you don't know of any way that you've, at least not that you've ever heard of, that would help uh, revive Versing. Okay, I'm gonna rouse Philaly. Philaly, you are woken by a bald elven female who stands over top of you, shaking you to consciousness and mentioning that it is your turn to stand watch over the camp. I wake up surprisingly calm and lean myself against a rock. I don't really have like anything to do, so could I read a prayer book to keep myself awake? Absolutely. And as you immerse yourself in the prayer book, reminding yourself of the words of the Lord above, you uh, eventually realize that you've Pass through numerous pages, and looking up and around you, you realize that it is probably time to turn your shift over. Uh, and I believe it was Palis is taking next watch. Can I let him sleep? Be nice. Absolutely. Would you like to hold on to the watch? Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, you continue on, kind of relaxing as best as you can, and continuing on in your book. I'm assuming every once in a while, glancing up to see if anything's entering the camp. Of course. I assume I get a full rest at one point. <laughs> um, eventually, you are surprised to see Gamely suddenly sitting up and walking over to you. I'm not ignoring you, Varus, by the way. Okay. Um, he kind of wanders over and sits down beside you, and looking over the prayer book, you see him kind of smile slightly before uh, just kind of glancing around. He looks over at you and says, Right, so um, I'm up now, so if you want, you can go uh, lay down and get some rest. And she says, I appreciate that, and she closes her book and goes to sleep. Some time passes before eventually all of you are aroused awake and you find yourself still in the dark tunnel but having regained your hit points, your spells, everything that you would have lost, you have managed to survive this long rest. I'll kill that fucking tree! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gamely kind of stares at you and goes, what fucking tree are you talking about there? Nothing, don't worry about it. No, no, I've you're not, been around you're not getting, I'm not getting. You're not No, no, you're not getting paid to know. That's how it works, right? You work for money? No, no, Ooh. no. I get paid to do my job, but everything beyond that is need-to-know basis. And if you're talking about a tree that can kill us, I need to know about that. Well, you came here through the same cemetery I did. Point taken. I'm gonna out of game. I'm going through spells to see if I can find anything to help. Okay. On that note, we are going to call it there for tonight. As you guys wake up, finding yourselves still in the tunnel, poor Versing still dead to the world, Varus alive and finding himself tied to a um, essentially a giant stalagmite. You have managed to survive most of the cavern, and along the way, you found a new friend. Woo! <laughs> that was intense, guys! <sighs> Poor Fiverr, welcome to your first session. <laughs> it was fun! <laughs> I'm glad that I have friends, <laughs> and I'm not alone in this cave by myself anymore. <laughs> You guys are fun to play with. Yeah, that was a lot of fun and stressful. We're now trying to figure out what to say to Pig Destroyer. Alright. Unfortunately, we let you die in the dark. We let you die in the dark and hide. <laughs> this is a new person. <laughs> Alright. Each of you is gaining 500 experience points this session. You will see some really, really weird math on the video because I accidentally typed in the wrong number, but that's okay. Um, I 
don't know who aside from Philele that's going to bring up in level, but Philele, you will definitely be level 2 by your next session, which means there's some stuff we'll have to adjust on your character sheet, but I can help you with that throughout the week. I leveled up. <laughs> Holy shit, you were in here at level 1? Yeah. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> She did an amazing job, considering. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If it's I'm just that cool, guys. If it's any consolation, the guy, the things you fought this session were only a quarter or challenge rating. But does that does not make us feel better about versing? <laughs> Alright, on that note, we are going to end the recording, which has still been running here. Um, I do want to thank you guys for allowing me to do this recording, and we'll see you all next week. Yeah.